In this video, I'm going to talk about the expectation value of the Hamiltonian squared. This video is part 5 of a mini-series dedicated to stationary states. You can find some links in the description below. First of all, I'm going to write down the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Uh, this is the same one we've been using in the previous few parts of this playlist. So we have the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi, and that gives us E times psi. And in part four, we actually derived a related relationship. We found that the Hamiltonian squared acting on psi is actually the same as E squared multiplying psi. Now, this is actually a, a pretty standard relationship in linear algebra. Uh, if you're dealing with matrices and vectors, you're going to find sim similar uh, equations relating eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So these are concepts from linear algebra. So we're going to need uh, this guy in this video. So this video is about the Hamiltonian operator squared and its expectation value. So let's find this square Hamiltonian's expectation value. So we've got h squared, and we're going to find its expectation value uh, using that method that we used in the, in the previous parts of this mini-series. So we're going to take the integral sandwich of little psi star, and we'll put the Hamiltonian operator squared, and we'll have psi dx. So this is little psi, again, because the time dependence of the expectation value disappears. Uh, for stationary states. Why does it disappear? Well, it disappears because the exponential factors can be grouped together and they can actually cancel each other out and give e to the 0, which is the same as 1. And we found that in uh, previous videos. Now, if you look at this integral sandwich, you can actually identify this pair of guys together. And this is exactly what we see over here. So we can swap this guy for this guy. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's change this integral sandwich by swapping those two guys out. That's going to give us psi star. And then we're going to have e squared multiplying psi and dx. So e squared is a constant. The square of a constant is also a constant. So we can actually move this constant outside of the integral sandwich. And if we move this constant outside over here, what is that going to give us? That's going to give us e squared times the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star times psi dx. Now, e squared is just our constant. What is this mess over here? In the past few videos, we've actually dealt with this stuff over here. This is just the probability density function integrated over the entire domain. And that has to be 1. Uh, that's a consequence of the normalization condition. So the normalization condition is satisfied because psi over here uh, this actually belongs to a wave function that is normalized. It has to be normalized in order to be a physically reasonable state. So this over here is actually uh, 1. Now, why is it actually equal to 1? Well, it's because this is the same, psi star times psi, is actually the same as this guy over here. It's the same as psi of x magnitude squared. And we know this is the probability density function, which is equal to capital psi, which depends on x and t, and that magnitude squared. So how do we know this? Well, that's actually the first video in this mini-series on stationary states. We found that the probability density function doesn't have a time dependence for these special states, which are stationary states. So this guy is just equal to 1. This whole integral evaluates to 1, and that's just going to give us e squared. So the takeaway message for this video is that the square of the Hamiltonian, its expectation value is equal to e squared. h squared, the expectation value of that is e squared. And we're going to be using this useful fact in the next video when we talk about the variance of the Hamiltonian operator. So make sure uh, you watch that next video because all of this useful work has actually been just for that video. Because that video is going to show us what the variance is. And the variance is a very important quantity uh, in quantum mechanics. So uh, a quick little summary of what we actually did. We used the time-independent Schrodinger equation to get this relationship over here between the Hamiltonian squared and E squared. And we substituted this relationship into the integral sandwich. Then 
we moved the constant outside and we evaluated this integral to 1 because of the normalization condition and that gave us e squared. So the expectation value of the Hamiltonian squared is equivalent to e squared. Make sure you watch all the other videos in this quantum mechanics playlist. You can find them all by clicking over here.